Subhanahu Wa brings it in the form of a card. So this man is surprised. He's like, Ya Allah, what is this going to do? But there's 99 scrolls on one side and your one card. What is that going to do? What is that going to make a difference? He tells him, today I am the most just. And I give every person his due justice. So he puts this card on the side of good deeds and it unbalances it. And the 99 scrolls, they fly up in the air. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him that it's one time, one time in your life that you said La ilaha illallah sincerely and it was accepted. One time that you said La ilaha illallah sincerely and it was accepted. This is all the men did. So never give up on, on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never think that don't belittle any, 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 anything that you do as a result of the sins that we committed. One of the other names that's paired with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name Ashtakur is Al Ali. And the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the meaning of Al Alim is the one who is all knowing. And the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do that, the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do that, is He's telling you that He knows everything. Even if no one else finds about it. Sometimes you put, you put money in the masjid and no one knows that you put it. Sometimes you help someone and no one knows that you helped them. Sometimes you do a sponsorship for an orphan, a sponsorship for someone, and the orphan doesn't know you helped them. And no one thanks you for it. You bring iftar to the masjid and no one knows about it. And no one thanks you for it. No one appreciates you for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you when He uses His name, the all-knowing, with the all-appreciative, He's trying to tell us that, you know what, I know. And that's all that matters. He's telling us that He knows. He knows every small thing you do and every big thing you do. So don't worry about anyone else knowing. Don't worry that anyone else doesn't know. So inshallah, to, to take something away from Ramadan, there's three things we can take away from Allah. Three small things that don't take much time and don't take very little effort. But three things that we want to, inshallah, keep after Ramadan and keep until the next Ramadan. The first is the remembering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The remembrance of Allah, our, our adhkar. We saw from this man who had 99 scrolls of sin, La ilaha illallah. He said, La ilaha illallah once. He said, La ilaha illallah once. And he entered him into Jannah. So imagine the reward, how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward someone that keeps saying La ilaha illallah. And I ask everyone inshallah right now to say La ilaha illallah. Well, wallahi, it might be the reason you entered into Jannah. You never know. And keep, keep from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another remembrance that we should always keep in mind is the praise of the Prophet sallallahu One of the things is that, does Allah pray? No. Does Allah fast? No. Does Allah give zakat? No. But what is one thing that Allah does that we do? Allah subhanahu wa says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima That Allah and His angels send peace and salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam All you who believe send peace and salutations upon the Prophet That's the only thing that Allah does and we do at the same time to continue from praising the Prophet Sallallahu and send you some salutations upon him. And the last thing is Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu he says that there's two words, there's two words that are, are heavy on the scale, but they're light on the tongue, and they're most beloved to the most merciful. What are these two things? What are these two phrases? SubhanAllah wa bihamdi, SubhanAllah wa bihamdi, SubhanAllah wa bihamdi, SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. So if increase from this remembrance, Allah will get an immense reward that will come on the Day of Judgment and we don't know where this reward is coming from. And it's something that you can't be insincere about. Because no one knows that you're doing. Even the word La ilaha illallah, if you say La ilaha illallah, you don't have to move your lips. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it that even if you can't move your lips, you can still say it. Even if you can't move your lips, you can still say it. And you can try it out, inshallah, after the khutbah. Another thing to keep in mind after Ramadan is to always have a smile on your face. Always have a smile on your face. The Prophet he says that don't belittle any action, even if it's a smile that you give to the face in the face of your brother. Even if just a smile. Wallahi, it might be the cause that enters you into Jannah. It might be the cause that enters you into Jannah. So even when you're leaving today from the masjid, make sure that every single person that you're passing by, you're, you're smiling in their face. When you go back to work, that you're smiling in their face. Then you keep a smile on your face consistently. And the last thing is that to give in charity. To give in charity whatever you can. 
Allah, we know one brother from, from the masjid back, back where I came from. He said that during the masjid fundraiser on the 27th night, he's standing and the imam is doing a fundraiser. And he says that as the imam is doing the fundraiser, I'm sitting here and I don't have much money. He says, Wallahi, I have $500 in my pocket. I have $500 in my pocket. And I don't have anything else. And the imam is going at 10000 1000 5000 And everyone is giving. And I feel so shy of myself that I don't have any money to give. So he goes down to 500 The imam is saying, anyone for 500 And then this brother raises his head. And no one knows. No one knows how much he, how much he had in his pocket till later on. till even years after. He tells us the story. And he says that he takes out the money and he puts it in the donation box. <coughs> All the money that he had. He said he didn't have a job. He didn't know how he's going to live the next day. But he had $500 in his pocket and he believed that Allah Taala will provide for him. And he gave $500. And he said that, Wallahi, as soon as I left the masjid door, as soon as I left the masjid, he says he gets a call for a job for $2,000. He gets a call for a job for $2,000. He says, Wallahi, I do not know where this came from. But I knew it was because of that donation that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is giving back to me after after I gave him after I gave him some of the money. So you never know that one dollar, Allah, that one dollar that you give, could be the reason that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala enters into Jannah and has mercy upon us. That these three things to keep in mind after Ramadan is that you remember Allah, you remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala continuously, you keep a smile on your face twenty four seven. Smile on your face 24-7. And the other thing is that you give in charity as much as you can. Ask Allah to have mercy upon on us. Ask Allah to forgive us and accept from us all our actions. <laughs> so inshallah I'll end with two last points and I'll conclude the khutbah inshallah one is that the Prophet he said that there's two types of people one type is a person that will have a lot of money he has a lot of wealth so he gives and he gives every time he's asked he gives away and there's another person that doesn't have much he doesn't have much. But he says that if I was given this amount of money, I would also give it away. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said that their reward is the same. Their reward is the same. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us just for our intentions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us just for our intentions. And the last point, inshallah, to reiterate the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will, he will appreciate the small things that we do. He will appreciate the small things that we do and he will magnify it. He will magnify it to enormous rewards. The last story is of, of a man, one of the, one of the friends of Sheikh Khalid Basuni. He says that he met him and he asked him, you know, we see you in Hajj almost every year. You know, how is that possible? You know, Hajj is expensive. How are you able to afford it? How are you able to come every year? He says, Wallahi, I've been coming for the past 20 years, over 20 years. And he says he doesn't know how he gets there every single time. He says, Wallahi, there were years that I said I'm not going to go. And he gets a call a couple, a couple weeks before telling them that they need help and they need the, a, tra a, group, a group is traveling and they need someone to help them. So come, we need you. And he says, Wallahi, every single year something similar like that happens. And he said it all happened after the first time that I went to Hajj. The first time that I went to Hajj. He says that he was driving, he was taking one of the buses. And on one of the stops, a lady comes on. And he says that this lady looked like she was exhausted. She was exhausted, she was tired, she was over, a little bit overweight. He said that I felt so bad for her. And the only empty seat was all the way in the back of the bus. And I was sitting in the front. So I got up and I told her that, oh my mother, you can take, you can take this seat. You can take this seat and I will go find a seat in the back. And she makes a dua for him. And he tells, and she tells him, that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never restrict you from coming to his house. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never restrict you from coming to his house. And he says, Wallahi, since then, every single year, I've never been restricted. Every single year I've been coming and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it easy for me to come. So know, one of the, the meaning behind Allah's name is Ash-Shakur, 
is that he appreciates. He appreciates every single thing that we do. He appreciates the small things that we do, and wallahi, he magnifies it. So I know it's it's going to be hard for us to pray qiyam every day. It's going to be hard for us to, to even fast once a week after Ramadan. But don't lose on everything. So take some of the small stuff that we used to do in Ramadan and keep it consistent. Ask Allah subhanahu to forgive us. Ask Allah subhanahu to enter us into the highest level of Jannah. Ask Allah subhanahu to not let any of us leave this gathering except that He has forgiven us. Ask Allah subhanahu to forgive us and have mercy upon us. Ask Allah subhanahu to accept every action that we did in Ramadan, the small of it and the big, and I ask Allah subhanahu to forgive our shortcomings. Allahumma akhbar lana dunubana wa israfana fi amnina wa thabbit Allahumma ala al-haqq abdamana wa sunna al-qamil kafirin wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa akhru salam.